السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ونبيه ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سليلا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam in this brief and very short khutbah insha'Allah I wanted to speak about a surah, a chapter in the Quran that I'm pretty sure most of us, if not all of us in this entire masjid, let alone the entire ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
knows. And that is probably the greatest surah to our eyes after Surah Al-Fatiha. After Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, that surah that I'm pretty sure everyone knows, that we teach our revert brothers and sisters this surah, we also teach our children this surah, but there's an also a surah that comes after Surah Al-Fatiha, that I'm pretty sure for at least a practicing Muslim, you've already recited it today. And I guarantee you, if you didn't recite it yet today from the morning until now, chances are, I, I put wallahi on it, you're gonna recite it tonight. You're gonna recite it later today. And it is a dead given that every single Muslim has memorized this surah. And our kids know this surah by heart. And it's very unfortunate that we've loved this surah for its wrong reasons. Because of how short and how concise and how sweet it is. So I hope inshallah within this short khutbah, I will introduce to you, at least to those that are unaware, of a different type of love for this surah. In fact, this surah, if you love this surah for its right reasons, we will attain the ultimate goal. And what is the ultimate goal of a Muslim? Is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is satisfied with you. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. That's the ultimate goal of a Muslim. Because wallahi, if the entire race, human race, and the jinn race, and the angel race, was to combine together and say they love Allah, but Allah does not love them back, we've not attained anything in this world. But if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us back, that's the ultimate goal. That's what we want because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you, He provides for you. He gives you. Not just in this life, but in the afterlife as well. He gives you happiness in this life and He gives you happiness in the next life when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves this surah. So when we love this surah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we hope inshallah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love us back. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one time was found in an authentic hadith, a companion of his complained about his neighbor. And his neighbor all night long was found reciting this particular chapter, which is chapter number 112 in the Quran, as we call it Surah Al-Ikhlas, the chapter of purity or the chapter of sincerity or some may call it Qul Huwa Allahu Ahad. And that chapter, a companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to have a neighbor. And back in the days, maybe sometimes in, in homes of today and age as well, but back in the days, they used to share walls. So this companion, his neighbor used to recite Surah Al-Ikhlas, Qul Hu Allahu Ahad, all night long. And in the hadith, it says, Ka'annahu yataqal laha, as if he was belittling this action. This companion complained to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I have a neighbor that all night long he's reciting Surah Al-Ikhlas. That's all he's reciting. As if he was belittling this action. Doesn't he know more surahs than this? He only knows Surah Al-Ikhlas, that's it. I remember, I recall one time when my father used to tell me in rural parts in Cambodia, especially in the villages, maybe not now, I hope, inshallah, not now, but back in the days, maybe the early 90s, where they used to have taraweeh prayer in the villages in Cambodia. And the only surah that they knew was Fatiha and Ikhlas. So the entire taraweeh was one hour to an hour and a half long of just Qulullah Wahad. Imagine that. Imagine how bored the Jama'ah of 2024, the average Muslim today would be. Oh, let's not go to that much shit. They're only reciting Surah Al Ikhlas. Because we belittle this act. If we only knew the value and how significant this surah is, we would change that level of love that we have. We love this surah, dear brothers and sisters, for its wrong reasons. Because it's short and quick and that we, we can read after what Allah We can continue reading so we can knock out our salawat. I want, inshallah, if you didn't get anything from this khutbah, I want to change that love that you have. Because I guarantee you, you love that surah for its wrong reasons. And I want, inshallah, from this khutbah that you love it for the right reason. So the companion complains and he says, Ya Rasulullah, this man, he, all he does is recite Qul Hu Allah Wahad, all night long. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, ask your companion, your neighbor, why is he doing this? So the companion goes and asks his neighbor, hey neighbor, why are you reciting Surah Al-Ikhlas all night? He says, because it speaks about Sifat Al-Rahman. 
it speaks about the description of the most merciful subhanahu wa ta'ala and I love to hear and speak about the most merciful subhanahu wa ta'ala so he goes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says Ya Rasulallah this is what he said and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says back to this companion he says tell your companion because of the love that he has for this surah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves him ultimately that is what you want Another companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He did what we call in this day and age A bid'ah An innovation Something new to the religion But in their case they had the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam To fact check To verify To see if this was A-OK -okay to do Because they had the messenger in their presence One companion used to lead the masjid in Masjid Quba Which is one of the first masjids If not the first masjid In Islam in Medina for those that have been visited Masjid Quba, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The Sahaba radiallahu anhu used to recite Surah Al-Ikhlas after Fatiha and then jump into another Surah. So say for example, he would say, Amin, Amin, Wahad. He would recite the entire Surah and he would say, He would re recite the entire Surah and then recite another Surah right after. So this was something innovative. This was a bid'ah. So they go to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they say, Ya Rasulullah, your companion in Masjid Quba, He's doing something a little different here. The Prophet ﷺ says the same thing, ask him why he's doing it. So they go and they ask him why he's doing it and he says the same thing. He says because it speaks about Ar-Rahman, it speaks about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I love this surah. The Prophet mm. says back to him, he says because of the love that you have for this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. Do you not understand, dear brother and dear sister, that our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa at least for the significant voluntary prayers, the significant sunnah prayers, such as the two sunnahs before Salat al-Fajr, such as the two sunnah prayers when you are in Hajj or in Umrah behind Maqam Ibrahim, such as the Witr prayer, such as the Duha prayer, all of these significant sunnah prayers, what did our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam encourage us to recite in these sunnah prayers? <laughs> Do you not understand, dear brothers and sisters, that a Muslim, at least a practicing Muslim, starts off his day with Qulhu Allah Wahad and ends his night with the nightly adhkar when he remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again with Qulhu Allah Wahad. Do you not understand how valuable this surah is, but yet it just goes right past our heads? I want to I wanna break down this surah very, very short, very, very sweet, but you got to understand what goes on behind the scenes. Because we understand that the Qur'an was revealed in intervals. Meaning in times and moments during our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This surah was a Mecki surah. Very early surah. Very short and sweet. And this surah was revealed at a time where the Najdis, where the people from An Najd, which is located in modern day Riyadh, which is the capital of Saudi Arabia today, groups of people of the polytheists or the mushrikun went to the Prophet sallallahu asking him a very interesting question. Because in their culture, you gotta understand their culture, they come from a culture that created families and lineage for their gods. They made their gods after all, out of stone, wood, copper, whatever it may be, and they created families. Families of their gods. So say for example, for those that are familiar with Hindu culture, they do exactly the same thing. And they create a mother and father, and the mother and father has a son, and the son has a daughter, and the list goes on and on and on and on. So they thought, billah, they thought Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was the same. So they went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this hadith is found in Al-Bukhari, narrated by the scholar of Qur'an, Ubay ibn Ka'ab radiallahu anhu. He says that a group of Najdis, a group of people of Najd, of Riyadh, came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and asked him, Insib lana rabbak, sif lana rabbak, describe to us your Lord. Because what you're saying about your Lord is a little bit different than what we know about Allah. Mind you, the mushrikun used to worship Allah. They used to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. This is why they're called mushrikun, shirk, to associate partners with Allah. So they knew who Allah was. But at the same time, they put Allah in the same category as asnam wal ayyad billah. That's not what you do. As Muslims know, we, how do we place a creator in the same category as a creation? A'udhu billah. So they asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, give us his lineage. 
give us your God's lineage. We want to know where he comes from. Who's his mom, a'udhu billah? Who's his dad? Does he have family? Does he have daughters? Does he have kids? In fact, in the seerah, they used to claim that Allah, wa a'udhu billah, his daughters were the malaika. This is what they used to claim. And they asked, tell us about your Lord. And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, per usual, he gets wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells his beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ba'da a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Say, O Muhammad, tell them, O Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He is Allah. Ahad. Notice Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala could have easily said, Kul Allahu Ahad. But rather Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Kul Hu Allahu Ahad. He is Allah, the one. In modern day, in 2024, when we see someone that is very, very good at what he does, we say he's him. That's who, that's who he is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses very similar language here. Mind you, the Quran is very poetic. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also, he never misses Jalla Jalalu. When it comes to the words and the harakat and the vowels in the Quran, there is no such thing as an accident. There is no such thing, oh, that dhamma is not supposed to be there. That fatha is not supposed to be there. My bad, I didn't mean to do that. A'udhu billah, a'udhu billah, a'udhu billah. When it comes to the Qur'an, every fatha, every dhamma, every kasra, every single letter is meant to be there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, tell these mushrikun who I am. Qul Allahu ahad. Say he is Allah, the one true God that stands by himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Notice Allah does not say, Qul Allahu wahid. Wahid, ithnayn, thalatha, arba, khamsa. For those that know Arabic, wahid means one. Couldn't have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say one, but when you say wahid like one, that means that there are many other ones available. Say for example, if I was to say, ma fi wahidun fil masjid, that there is no one in the masjid, meaning I didn't see, but perhaps someone was in the bathroom, perhaps someone was in the other room, perhaps I just didn't see. I would say, ma fi wahidun fil masjid. There is no one in the masjid. But if I was to say, ma fi ahadun fil masjid, there is absolutely no one in the masjid. This means I have full conviction and confidence that there was absolutely no one in the masjid. Notice the precision in the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ahadun, meaning there is no one out there that is worthy of your time, worthy of your sacrifices, worthy of 29 to 30 days of the month of Ramadan, stripping yourself away from food and drink that gives you nourishment, except Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no deity in the world that we would do that for, except Allah. There is no deity that we would sacrifice 30 minutes on a Friday, on a nice and sunny day while you're inside. Probably some of you are sweating right now. Some of you are doing this. I hope inshallah for the sake of Allah, we would do that for no one except for Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is summarized in just the one word, Ahad. That is the same word that Bilal ibn Rabah, a foreigner to Arabic, when he was tortured by Umayyah ibn Khalaf, the great staunch enemy of Islam, when he placed him under a rock in the scorching hot sun, and Bilal, radiallahu anhu, what does he say as we know the famous statement? Ahadun ahad, ahadun ahad. One true God, one true God, one true God. And Umar radiallahu anhu asks Bilal later on in his Islam, he says, oh Bilal, why did you say that? Why did you say that? He says two reasons. I only knew that word because of Surah Al-Ikhlas, of that Surah, and I wanted to tick off Umayyah even more. I wanted to make him even more mad. Although my skin was blistering, although my skin was burning in the hot sun, I wanted Umayyah to even be more mad. During the battle of Badr, guess what, dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum decided, because in battle they would have a war chant, and they would have war chants, and they decided to say what Bilal radiallahu anhu said in Mecca, Ahadun Ahad, Ahadun Ahad, Ahadun Ahad. One true God, one true God, one true God. And that shook the knees of Umayyah bin Khalaf, and he died in the battle of Badr. This, just this verse, Qul Allahu Ahad, in a summary, the brothers and sisters packs a punch. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described himself in a word that is only found in this chapter. Nowhere else in the Quran does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala call himself this title and this name except in this chapter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, 
Allah Samad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one, as Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu says, he is the one that everyone turns to at desperate times of need. I don't care if you're a Christian, I don't care if you're a Jew, I don't care if you're an atheist. When you are in dire need of someone, you're gonna cry out to God. I remember one time I was sitting on a plane and I was talking to an atheist and he said, I, didn't believe, I don't believe in God and I don't believe in the existence of a higher being. I said, okay, I respect that. I'm a Muslim. I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I told him, I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, okay, when turbulence hit your brothers and sisters in Islam, here is that same man that claimed he doesn't believe in a God saying, oh my God, oh my God. What happened? I thought you said you don't believe in God. Why are you saying, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God? Why? Because Allah Samad, He is the one that everyone knows deep down inside their heart. They're not going to cry out to Jesus. They're not going to cry out to whoever they believe in, but they're going to cry out to Allah, their creator, their maker. It is in our DNA. This is who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. It doesn't matter how far you are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are in desperate need, when no person, no human, no creation can help you, you will cry out to the Creator. This is Allah Samad. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Lam yalid wa lam yulad. Because they thought that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes from reproduction. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to them, he does not come from a source of reproduction, nor does he reproduce. Understand a very, very simple verse about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says about himself, Laysa kamithlihi shay. There is nothing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our feeble minds, our small weak minds try to interpret things and make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a creation because we get upset at Allah when He doesn't answer our dua. Because normally what humans do when we make dua or when we ask people for favors, we want that favor to be done. And when that favor is not done, we get a little bit upset. A'udhu Billah, we do the same thing to Allah. When we're making dua and Allah doesn't accept our dua, we're like, mm, I don't know. I don't know if I want to keep making dua, Allah, you know, He hasn't given me what I wanted. Because we're thinking Him, a'udhu billah, as a creation. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, laysa kamithlihi shay. There is nothing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah gave you everything in the entire world, then who would be the Lord and who would be the servant? Who would be the Lord and who would be the servant? Lam yalid wa lam yulad. They claimed, وَقَالَ اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَانُ وَلَدًا They claimed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a son. تَكَادُ السَّمَاوَاتُ يَتَفَطَّرْنَ مِنْهُ وَتَمْشَقُ الْأَرْضُ وَتَخِرُ الْجِبَالِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Surah Maryam, The heavens and the mountains creak about to explode at such blasphemy. How dare you claim that Allah has a son? Do you not know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is? Do you not know what He's capable of doing? This is like a child saying to the dad, Dad, you never did nothing for me. A'udhu billah. A'udhu billah. The father, when you were, you know, taking care of business in your diaper, it's going to stay there for a week or two if your parents don't clean it up. You couldn't take it off your own and clean yourself with the wipes or whatever it may be. Your father, despite how evil he was to you when you are a teenager, guess who was doing it at that age? Father. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He raised you for who you are today, and yet you have the audacity to claim that Allah has a son? He does not come from reproduction, nor is He someone that reproduces. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a proper understanding of this deen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wal mursaleen Nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Dear brothers and sisters in Islam I conclude this khutbah with the last verse in Surah Al-Ikhlas in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدٍ Again beautifully Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts this surah with قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٍ and he ends again, وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدٍ Again, the poetic beauty of the Qur'an, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدٍ There is no one in his category. There is no one in his level. We, dear brothers and sisters, unfortunately in 2024, for those that live under a rock, I'm about to shock you with some news, that we live in a godless society. We live in a society that wants to take divinity out of the picture, not just for Muslims. They fear the Muslims the most, why? Because we are the only standing religion. And I say this with confidence, that we are the only standing religion today that upholds our values and our traditions and our rituals in Islam. That's why they fear us, dear brothers and sisters, because we still pray our five daily prayers. Despite how bad and evil you are when it's Ramadan, guess what, you're fasting. The Christians have lost their faith. The Jews have lost their faith. The only standing religion that believes in a system of divinity is Islam walillah alhamd. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one true God, we know that. And we live in this godless society that we try to drive the youth and the Christians and the Jews or whatever faith it may be that God does not exist. They create movies such as the Marvel Universe to trick you into thinking you can overtake divinity. To trick you into thinking that you can overtake a superpower. They make you believe that you weak little human being can come together and have a force and with your little superpowers that you have, you may be a millionaire, whatever it may be, you can build gadgets or whatever it may be and take over a superpower. They want you to believe that because so that way you can downplay the system of divinity. So when Ad-Dajjal, Al-Masih Ad-Dajjal, the one-eyed liar, the Antichrist comes and he claims that he is Allah, when you don't know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, it is very easy for you to succumb to the deception of shay shaytan or Dajjal. Very, very easy for you because you don't know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أحد. No one is on his level. He is on his own level, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is very unfortunate when you are crafty in basketball or when you're good at soccer, or when you're good at a sport, they say, for those that don't know, when you reach a certain level, they call it God level, Billah. As if you've reached a certain level of epitome, or, or pinnacle of success in whatever craft that you do. <laughs> but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدْ No one is on his level, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And no one will ever be on his level, subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the Lord we are dealing with. This is the Lord we are worshiping. And at the same time, this is the Lord we choose to disobey. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So dear brothers and sisters in Islam, I hope the takeaway that you got from this khutbah, when you recite surah, Qul huwa Allahu ahad, you love it for its right reason. And not the wrong reason of it being short and sweet. That I hope inshallah you build a love Although it only took 30 minutes to speak about this, there's a lot more gems that we can extract. I want you to do your homework, inshallah. And it is, it is most deserving. And for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He deserves a little bit more than just 30 minutes of your time. He deserves a little bit more. So for your homework assignment is to dive deep into this surah, surah al-ikhlas, that speaks about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you begin to love him. And when you begin to love him, you forget that you're even worshiping him. This is why for us, oh, I can't wait for Salat al-Jum'ah to be over. Oh, why is prayer so long? Oh, it's Asr already. Oh, it's Maghrib already. When we think of Salah as a burden or a chore, it's because unfortunately we don't love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The moment we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're gonna ask, is there more to do? Can we keep talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? But it is very unfortunate, and I myself am guilty of this as well, is that we don't love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as He should be loved. Because when you love Allah, when you know Allah, you begin to love Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that way when you cry out to Allah, it will be a familiar voice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows of. Some of us have never made dua for this entire year. The last time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heard your voice when you made dua was in Ramadan. That's not a familiar voice to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When one of the angels was holding the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Yunus, the Prophet Yunus, was swallowed in the well. And when he said, La ilaha illa anta, subhanaka inni kuntu min al -zalimeen. Oh Allah, there's no God worthy of worship except you, and you're the only God. Inni kuntu subhanak, how perfect you are. Inni kuntu min al -zalimeen. I am from the wrongdoers. He acknowledged fault. He admitted fault. He said, oh Allah, I need your help. I'm 
in the belly of the well. No one can see me. No one can hear me. And the angel that holds the throne of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says to his maker, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, oh Allah, I hear a familiar voice. That's what you want to be. You want to be stuck in the belly of a whale where no one can find you, your belly of the whale, whatever predicament and problem you got going on in your life, when you call out to Allah, the angels recognize your voice. That's a familiar voice we've heard before. You want to reach that level when you cry out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't be an unfamiliar voice to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives us a proper understanding of this deed. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just as we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we ask you, Ya Rabbil Alameen, to love us back. We ask you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to bless our households and our families in this dunya, to bless our lives in al-akhirah wa jannat in firdaus al-ala, and ultimately to see your noble face, Jalla Jalalu. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusallu la'ala al-nabi, Ya ayyuha al-ladhina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala alihi, محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين وذل الكفر والكافرين ودمر أعداءك وأعداء الدين يا قوي يا عزيز اللهم في للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم انصر المستضعفين في فلسطين اللهم انصر المستضعفين في فلسطين اللهم عليك بأعدائهم يا رب العالمين اللهم احسهم عددا واقتلهم بددا ولا تغادر منهم أحدا اللهم أليهم عجائب قدرتك يا رب العالمين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار واقم الصلاة